Well, good afternoon, good people, and Eagle fans and 49er fans, although I will say 49er fans, uh, haven't seen quite as many of you guys as I've been seeing normally. Um, back here at the Red Brick House, got to get my truck worked on and a couple other things, and just want to give an update here. Here's an interesting one that Jerry Jones, fans believing I'm the biggest issue with the team is very fair. Well, Aren't you the one, Jerry, who said, we're all in? We're all in, right? You remember saying, we're all in. And then we proceeded to wait until literally the first game to sign the quarterback. And it was what? Two weeks before that, you signed your wide receiver? So he missed all the training camp. I think that's what happened. So let's go through this article. Shout out to... Uh, Bleacher Report here and Adam Wells, who wrote this article. Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones is accepting responsibility for where things stand with the team after another ugly loss on Sunday to the Baltimore Ravens. During his weekly appearance on 105.3 The Fan, um, Jones said fans who believe he is the biggest issue with the team right now, it's very fair to criticize, to make that criticism. Jones' management of the Cowboys roster has been under heavy scrutiny since the end of last season. They were the last team to sign an external free agent for the second time in three years. Think about that for a second. The last team to sign an external free agent. The last team for the second time in three years. So you've let everybody go through, pick out all the stuff that they do, you know, because you say, we don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on those free agents. All seven players they signed in free agency were given one-year deals. In addition to the lack of free agent activity, the Cowboys engaged in prolonged negotiations with CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott that dominated off-season storylines. Dallas did eventually get long-term deals done with both players before its first game of the season, but it felt like an unnecessary process when the contracts that were signed wound up being in line with what had been expected for top-tier free agents in their respective positions. Jones didn't help matters by saying in August that he felt no urgency to get Lamb's deal done, which promoted a reason, uh, I mean, promoted a response on X from an all pro wideout. Now the season has started and teams can evaluate basis on their performance. The Cowboys' flaws that weren't really addressed in the offseason are becoming more uh, glaring. The run defense remains a huge problem after giving up a combined 464 yards on the ground in the last two weeks and almost 700 yards on the season. Meanwhile, the Cowboys offense is averaging 73.7 yards rushing per game. They haven't had an individual player rush for at least 100 yards since Tony Pollard in week three of last season. Making matters worse is Derrick Henry, who admitted he had interest in the Cowboys as a free agent and ran for 151 yards on two touchdown, with two touchdowns on 25 carries. So we literally are looking like the laughingstock. And you got nobody else to blame but Jerry Jones. I'm sorry. This this has to fall. You know, just, oh God. Breathe. Breathe, Mark. Jones told reporters after the game they couldn't afford to sign Henry during the offseason. He signed a two year, $16 million contract with the Ravens in March. The Cowboys are 3-5 and five in their last eight games, including the playoff loss to Green Bay in January. They will play the New York Giants at MetLife Stadium on Thursday. Um, i got to look at something here while we're here. Cowboys over the cap. All right. So if we're looking at this right now, I'm just curious what Zeke Elliott. So Zeke Elliott's cap number for this year is $2 million. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Um, so we have also Trey Lance. Where, 
Bears, Trey Lance, Malik Hooker, Terrence Steele is 6.5 cap number, Trey Lance, 5.3 million. So between those two, Trey Lance and Zeke, that's 7.3 million. He, yeah. We have Michael Gallup, J. Ron Curse, Peyton Hendershot, Nashawn Wright, Eric Scott, and Sean McKenna that were all free agents that are dead money that we are currently carrying. So the thing is, we have currently $23 million in cap space right now. We have projected $29 million next year, but we have triggers in C.D. Lamb and Dak's contract. We have $98 million for 2026. Saying that we don't have the money to pay a Derrick Henry when we've made mistakes on um, some of the contracts that we have, because Zeke Elliott is still a $4 million cap hit, in dead money this year is ridiculous. But somehow, other teams are able and willing to find a way to do business. You can't honestly say, if you honestly say we cannot sign anybody and you haven't signed anybody and you are the only, the, the last team, two out of the last three years in signing any free agents, and you do finally sign people at the last minute because deadlines make deals get done, and you bring in bottom-tier free agents and try and plug them in at the last minute and don't know your system or your plays, then yes, Jerry, you are the problem. You are the problem. You, you either And the thing with the, the contracts... You can't, for those out there to say, you know, Dak Prescott, you know, he, he screwed the pooch. Here's the reality. Here's the reality. Last year's money, when you say we paid $55 million, excuse me, $55 million is what Joe Burrow got paid last year. With the increase in the salary cap, with the increase with the salary cap, you have about the same number when you pay $60 million to Dak. Just like a couple of years ago, forty million is the same as today's sixty million. So it's not that the Cowboys are that far off as far as the money that they're spending on Dak. Dak Prescott's money, in fact, created more cap space now. Okay, I want you to get that in your head. We, you know, people who say, "Well, we shouldn't have signed Dak Prescott," we would have less money right now without Dak and CD on the roster. But they're not doing anything with that money. They're not doing anything with that money. It's not that they paid Dak is the reason why they can't pay others. They've been able to do or could have been putting players around Dak his first four years when he was less than $2 million every year. And even after he got his contract, the only year that it was over 30 was the franchise tag. The next year was 17, 19, and 26. So even this year, here's what I want you to understand. Listen to me right now. Listen to me right now. Dak Prescott's tag number, or excuse me, contract number this year is 44. Last year it was 26. The year before it was 19. The year before that it was 17. Those aren't outrageous numbers, cap hits, for your player. Okay? Those are not outrageous numbers for your quarterback. The Cowboys mismanage contracts and who to sign. And they have a belief in their own players too much. You know, I said... A couple of times. it's you, you have to pick and choose where you're going to spend your money, your allocate your resources. For me, I looked and I said about six years ago, the year that we drafted Leighton Van Der Esch, go out and get a Demario Davis. Demario Davis has not missed a game since he signed with the New Orleans Saints. 
and has been an ultimate player for that defense. Stud. Stud. I said, after he was a free agent from the Cardinals, go get a Calais Campbell, which is another guy that you could have plugged in on the defensive line. And I've said after he left Jacksonville and after he left Baltimore, guy is still playing at a great level, better than anything we've got right now. And this year, I think he only took a contract for like $2.5 million. $2.5 million. And so we look at these things and we always hear, we can't do. And then we go out and we get guys that aren't, that, that can't do. And then we expect Super Bowl. We say Super Bowl or bust. Jerry, you say all in Super Bowl or bust and you do nothing to help him go all in. If anything, you've made the team worse by letting go a system that was kind of working on the defense that you didn't supplement. You know, the problems with Dan Quinn may have not been Dan Quinn. It may have been the lack of urgency, as he said, to get him the players that he needed to really implement a system. And now we're doing the same thing to Mike Zimmer. So, yes, Jerry, you are to blame. Um, I'm going to have more on this later on this evening. We definitely will have more on this later on this evening. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> Peace out.